Hey everyone, Daniel here. Today's video we're talking about the liquid that comes out of the biodigester. So, in theory, food goes in, gets munched up by the bacteria, comes out as a biofertilizer. Now there's been grand, like, grand claims, you know, that um, organic made at home fertilizers, say for instance, um, maybe comfrey tea or like a tea made from grass and weeds. You know, you put it in a bucket, you let it ferment for so long and you open it up, it's brown and it smells. And you think, oh wow, that's good organic stuff. But has it actually been tested? There was one video that I saw on YouTube actually. Um, fella actually did make uh, some grass tea and whatnot. He's fermented it for I think a month or so, opened it up, and then he did a home test on it for NPK, nitrogen, potassium, and phosphorus. And it was found that there was not much at all. So, what was there really much point to it? So, which prompted me to think, well, you know, everyone says, oh, this biofert, all the research papers that I've read says, yeah, it can be used on gardens, you know, dilute it down a bit, but just how much? How good is it? Well, we find out. So the next step was to find a facility that I could actually take samples to and get tested. So I jumped on old Google and did a search for like soil testing, water testing, runoff, nutrients, that sort of bizzo, like for farms and whatnot and government departments. Uh, so I found one in Coffs Harbour, not too far away. So I spoke to them and they said, yep, yeah, no worries, we can do a bit of a test for you. So they said we can do uh, a bacteria test uh, nutrient sweep and metals. So that's like your trace elements and stuff as well. So I've got MPK, um, bacteria and trace elements. So that was great. They asked me to put uh, samples together. So I've got a glass jar on the left here, which is for the bacteria test and just a Coke bottle for the nutrients. So with all those collected, we jumped in the car and dropped off our sample. And uh, lovely enough for next time to give me some extra sample collection things. Like, like, you know, they look a bit more professional than a Coke bottle and like a pasta jar. So that's for next time. We'll do a comparison as well. So I had to wait about a week and then uh, I got the results here. Oh, so I've scanned those papers and I will pop them up while I go through it on paper. So we got a microbiological test done. Um, so the results for that, uh, TNTC, too numerous to count. So when I ordered that test, I actually thought they'd be seeing what type of microorganisms and bacteria actually present in the solution, but obviously that was not the case. Um, but it probably wouldn't matter so much anyway because the bacterium in the digester would be anaerobic, it seems to take it out and use it on the plants. It's, they're going to die and you know, probably be of no consequence anyway, except for feed the soil with their bodies. That pleasant. Uh, so on this page also is the, the metals. So one to note on here, we'll go through these a bit later on when I've got a comparison. Um, of other fertilizers. I went to a hardware store, the big green warehouse, and had a look in their gardening section and went to some hydroponic fertilizer. There's I think five different ones. Um, they actually have some of these listed as um, blue grams per litre as well, so we can do a bit of comparison. Uh, so noting on here first is potassium. And I've got 261 milligrams per litre of parts per million. Now, this, you can pause all this so you can screenshot or whatever and have a look at it uh, but we'll move on to the page two of this where it talks about the nitrogen and phosphorus is what I really want um, so ammonia nitrogen which is good that's the organic nitrogen that plants use uh, there's 318 of that plus other nitrogen factors there so the total nitrogen is 
398 um, the total phosphorus 74.6 so I guess when a lot of gardeners look for fertilizer they look for an NPK ratio now that's all well and good but the NPK ratio by between um, one fertilizer and the other really depends on the, like the parts per million or milligrams per liter of what's actually in the solution you know I could have two matching fertilizers like say three one and two which is the preferred ratio but one can have like nitrogen 150 and the other one can have 300 so those levels are different but if we are to work out the NPK ratio of the liquid out of the biodigester uh, we have to put it into a ratio format here so the definition I've got for the fertilizer ratio is uh, on here in Google I'll read it now the fertilizer ratio indicates the proportion of nitrogen phosphate and potash as um, potassium in the fertilizer product and is determined by dividing each of the three numbers in the fertilizer grade which is on a container or our sample by the lowest number in the grade so the lowest number in our grade is the um, no it is the phosphorus the phosphorus which is 74.6 so that becomes our one and then we divide the rest so I've already gone ahead and done that so our NPK ratio is 5.3 to 1 to 3.4 to NPK um, so it's got more nitrogen which is good so every sample is going to differ from the uh, digester depending on what you feed it so obviously I started mine on cow manure it gets fed like a bread um, eggshells which actually don't digest that well as I found out while emptying it back in the day um, meats, fats, uh, you know, fruit, veg I don't feed any bones or seeds um, so lately after these results I've actually gone and um, picked up some alpaca poo to, to top up with manure and nutrients and I'm also adding a bit of molasses so those um, that feed doesn't re reflect in these results here thank you doke so what I'll do is I think I'll actually try and put a bit of a spreadsheet for you of these other nutrients here so you can do a bit of a comparison uh, from my results to the, the results in the um, hydroponic fertilizer I'll be back so just before I forget, um, I don't know if the lab actually diluted my sample when they did all these tests. From memory, the TDS when I took the sample in was 1138. So that's just something to go by. Also, before I forget, when it says like iron, manganese and whatnot, that's the metal, but it doesn't tell me the actual salt of the metal and whether like the uptake of the plant just the metal itself so you know when you buy like iron chalate or you know sulfide that's the salt of the metal that's suitable for the plant that I didn't like I don't have those so we're just going by the metal itself which is also the same as what's on the back of the hydroponic stuff hope that makes sense again just before I forget again uh, our results are listed in milligrams per litre the stuff on the back of the hydroponic fertiliser is in parts per million but that's of parts per million of a litre anyway so the results should be comparable hopefully that's the last one right. spreadsheet done uh, before we get into that I'll just put up a few pictures of the hydroponic fertiliser so you can just have a look it's from Manutech, uh, there's no affiliation, it was just um, what was on the shelf at the shop. So, a few pictures, labels, whatnot. Um, audio, and then we'll get onto this spreadsheet. I've got it in front of me. There it is. Um, so, as I said, MPK ratios here or there, really, you've just got to go by the milligrams per litre or the parts per million as you can see here they all change anyway um, not 
sure why the looks like they tried to round off some numbers but haven't done the others but anyway um going down you know we've got a good number of you know nitrogen phosphorus potassium it's quite comparable uh we've got a high level of calcium which is good um you know it's good for plants anyway uh helps stick up the cell wall and fights against pests and diseases and makes the plant a bit more hardy um yeah looks pretty good there but as i say you can pause at any time and have them there so yeah on that spreadsheet that's just what's on the back of the hydroponic fertilizer so it is missing a couple of the um the metals and whatnot that were listed on my paperwork so if you want to go back and have a look at that that's fine that's great the lab also did give me some paperwork which i'll up here uh, which is some guidelines to safe levels of the metals and whatnot into drinking water irrigation and livestock so that's good too so in conclusion look oh, it's, i think it's really good that they've got this tested a um, bit of proof that there's actually some useful elements in there and you know, can actually use it on the garden. Here's a biofert. Uh, so, other companies I do know that make biofert do supplement in um, other fertilizers, sometimes synthetic fertilizers. Um, so, if there's any deficiencies here, you know, as I mentioned before, I'm going to top up with uh, alpaca poo and um, some molasses just to get those microbes going and hopefully maybe fill in some blanks and then I'll get it retested. Now that they've given me the trusty jars, I can get retested in a couple of months time and then make another video on that and we can compare past and previous um, results to, to the new stuff. But it's good. If anything, I've just proved that there's some uh, good stuff in there for the bioforts for plants and soil. So if you made it this far, thanks very much for watching. Um, you can Drop us a line, drop us a comment, suggestions, what you'd like to see. Um, always happy to look into other avenues. All right, guys, thanks very much for your time and catch you next time. See ya.